All right, hello everyone. My name is Eric Marks with FindingMiddleEarth.com, and today I am super honored and excited to announce a collaboration that I'm doing with the software company Pictorial. So for the past couple of months, I've been hard at work working on an Eric Marks signature preset pack for Pictorial 3 software. And regardless of what raw processor you use, um, I seem to get a lot of questions through email, my blog, social media, YouTube comments, and a lot of them start out sounding something like this. Uh, Eric, I have all these photos uh, that I have this vision for that I take out in the field, but when I bring them back to post-production, get them on my computer, it's really hard to know where to find uh, like a step-by-step -step starting out workflow. Like, you know, what should I do as a starting point for each photo so that I can then start my creative process and continue further editing the photo. And, you know, typically I just give people, you know, a, a paragraph answer like, you know, you can always do some contrast and I do just the basics, highlights and shadows. But then over the years I've realized that I've created a whole arsenal of presets for myself personally um, that I use as a starting point for me. So uh, since, since I do it, since I normally just use the presets for me, they're all kind of jumbled up and disorganized, of course. Uh, but I wanted to create a preset pack for all of you. And so inside of Pictorial 3, uh, I went through hundreds, probably thousands of different photos, different uh, lighting conditions, contrast conditions, all of my landscape photos that have been my favorite ones. And I just created a starting point for each one that was really pleasing to me for the color, for the contrast. Uh, I have preset. Uh, radial gradients and linear gradient filters in there that you can tweak and move to your specific photo. And I think you're really gonna like them. But I'll, I'll be the first one to tell you that presets aren't meant to be a one-click fix for your photos. A lot of people will tell you that. But keep in mind that every single photo is different. And you have to understand that some photos, the preset's just not gonna work. It's never gonna look really good. That's why there's multiple presets. But the presets are meant to be a great starting point for your photo. That's the key there. It's a starting point so that then you can go into my preset, tweak the settings a little bit to get it how you like it, and then start your creative vision from there. So I really hope you like these presets. Uh, I'll talk to you in just a second and I will show you how to use them. All right, welcome back everyone. Let's go ahead and hop into pictorial here. So here's uh, quite a few example photos. These are all photos that I have taken in the past with uh, just various different cameras, Canon, Nikon, Fuji cameras. And I'm gonna try to run through as many of them as I can to give you some a uh, quick little tutorial on how to use my presets here. Uh, and then of course there will be uh, instructions as well that Pictorial will provide on how to uh, install the presets and import them into your Pictorial. It's very easy to do, but they're gonna show up just like this with the other presets. There'll be uh, a little tab here that says Eric Marks Signature Preset Pack. So just click on that and you'll be good to go. So here's my presets. And uh, let's start with this one here. So this is a sunset uh, raw file from the Fuji X-T2 straight out of the camera. And I have a lot of sunsets like this that have this kind of dull blue sky that kind of has this, this gradation into a yellow warm color. And so with this one, I created a preset called Color Gradient Gentle Sunset. So if you click that, look at that. How beautiful is that? It just kind of has this beautiful gradation from kind of a blue purple hue right into the warm tones of the sun. And so uh, here's, here's how you would use it if this was your photo. So let's say in your photo, the sun maybe is a little higher or a little bit to the left or whatever. So you can go into the adjust module here, head down to retouch and then tone. All right. And you can see right when I clicked tone, all of my uh, preset uh, linear gradient filters and radial filters are already in here. So you can see if you click the uh, radial filter tool down here, here's my radial filter, and you can move it around to match wherever your sunset is, the actual sun, but I have it over the sun right here, and it's got some exposure boost, it's got a little bit of minus contrast, a lot of minus clarity, uh, some highlight boost, and this is just kind of my special little formula that always works out really well on my sunset photos. Because a lot of times when I shoot into the sun, if I'm not shooting in brackets, the sun will have this really gross ring around it, especially if you crank down the highlights. So I find that actually letting the sun blow out a little bit and minusing the clarity kind of softens the lines and makes it really nice, fuzzy, warm sunset. So that's already preset in there for you. You don't have to do anything other than just move this uh, radial filter around wherever you want it to match your sunset. And of course you can you know play with these sliders until your heart is content. Like I said, these presets that I create are just a starting point for you to then uh, carry on into your creative vision. 
So there's that. And then of course, if you click the uh, linear gradient filter, then you can mess with the gradient as well. You can move that you know, down and up depending on where your sky is. But of course, I already have this one built in to fit this photo. And it already has the uh, preset white balance, exposure, all the stuff that I tweaked over here to get this great little uh, color gradation. So there you go. That is the color gradient sunset. Of course, you can use the other presets on this photo too. The best thing about presets is it's just kind of a fun little playground. Just play around with them. And it might even uh, you know make you like one portion of the preset. If you see like, a, for example, if you click a preset and you hate everything about it, but you like what it does to the trees, for example, well then export that photo as kind of a, a, th a thinking point for you and then you know try another preset maybe you'll like that preset on the sky and then export that photo and then you can blend the best of them together in Photoshop or something so that way you can kind of have three different photos with three separate presets or something and then blend all those presets together so that's another great thing about presets is you don't have to have it affect the whole photo if you just like one little portion go and mask it in in, in, uh, in Photoshop and you can you know mask in all the best parts so that was that preset. Let's hop over to the next example real quick. This is uh, one that I took on a drone, actually. Uh, it was a couple hundred feet in the air on this one, shooting over this river here with the, in, uh, with the autumn colors. And on this one, there's a preset up here called Autumn Color Pandemonium. Just click that, and boom. So you got these really nice poppy autumn colors now, nice blue sky. And it's the same thing with, with these presets. If you hop into the Adjust module, Go down to retouch and tone. Some of them have these tweaks and some of them don't, but this one has quite a few, if we click the radial filter tool, has quite a few of these little radial filters that I've um, created here. And it's basically just a ball of light and some warmth, some white balance. You can kind of drag it around wherever the sun is hitting your foliage or wherever it's hitting a rock or something in the foreground. And you can move all these little radial filters around to fit your photo where the sun is hitting. So you can see the sun is hitting back here, for example, right here on this little tree line. But the second I move the radial filter on it, it just really pops and makes the color stand out and it kind of draws your eye to those, to those colors. So you have these, um, radial filters you can play with and you can drag those where, you, where you'd like. And of course, if you go here to the linear gradient, we have one of those as well, which you can always play with on your photo, same thing. I tweak the white balance, a little bit of highlights, some exposure, etc., and you can tweak those sliders to fit your photo. But again, a great starting point, and just the before and after is great. If you reset everything and you go back, it's just a really nice before and after. You can do the little before and after tool down here as well. So really like that one. That's going to be a nice uh, starting point for a lot of people with autumn colors. All right, let's go to the next one here. So this is actually a panda I took uh, years ago. I uh, just, I loved this. It's almost like he was posing for me. It was really cool. He, he just, I hadn't seen him all day. I was waiting there and then he finally came out, put his arms over the log and like smiled at me. And I was like, man, am I dreaming? This is crazy. So uh, on this one, I really like using my um, Fuji Color presets. Now, uh, I created two presets in here. One is called Fuji Color Fanboy and the other one is Fuji Color Fanboy number two. And uh, I, I spent hours and hours analyzing my Fuji JPEGs, where the Fuji just kind of, you know, bakes in all that, that Fuji color goodness and spits it out into the JPEGs. I just poured over those photos for hours and studied the different color hues and the luma values of each color and went into the RGB channels in pictorial and really tweaked to try to get the best Fuji color I could. So if you have a Nikon camera, Canon camera, Sony camera, this will give you kind of a pop of Fuji color in certain photos that it works on. So let's just click this Fuji color fanboy preset and look at that. Let's do a before and after. That's before and after, before and after. It looks so much like my X-T2 would. So let's go here to Fuji Color Fanboy 2. And that's more of a, like a cooler one. So that's, that one's a little more warm and that one's cooled off. But they're just great little, just quick fixes to make the colors pop a little more, contrast. And again, a great starting point. Or with something like this, you could even just export that because it looks just super nice as it is. Some of these, you know, you don't have to keep going on. You can just click the preset uh, and you'll be good to go. But a lot of them, you'll want to tweak it, you know, and get creative with it. So that's that, uh, before and after. And I also have another one, uh, another preset called Exposure Sandwich Black and White. Let's click that. And so this one's actually really cool. This I do this a lot with my black and whites. If we go into Adjust on this one, and the Retouch and the Tone, okay? I have two gradient filters. If you click on the gradient filter tool, I have one here that's coming from the left corner, 
and one here that's coming from the right bottom. And both of them have this crazy minus exposure value. So it's kind of clamping the exposure from the corners. And I have a radial filter in the middle right here, a big radial filter, see how big? That has a nice streak of exposure, of of positive exposure. So that's why I called it uh, exposure sandwich because it's literally clamping the exposure on the sides and you got one big long radial filter of exposure in the center. So for, for photos like this, it's great. And you can obviously tweak the uh, position of these. So if I wanted to move this you know, filter around to where his eyes are, I could do that. But this black and white tends to work really good for stuff like this, for some portraits, uh, for like wedding detail shots. If you have rings or the, the wedding dress somewhere, you know, like in the center, you can just not have a nice big streak of light uh, with those clamped off exposures on the side. So I really like that one. And that preset, again, is called uh, Exposure Sandwich Black and White. So we'll go ahead and reset that. And we'll move on. Let's see. Let's skip that one. Let's go to this one. This one's a nice one. So this is one I took um, of a place called Sweetwater Creek in winter. You see all the icicles back here on this log? I just liked this. Uh, the, the sunset, the golden sunset was kind of reflecting on the water. Everything was really nice. So this is straight out of camera. I believe this was a Canon camera, 5D Mark III, I believe. So on this one, I have a couple presets will work nice. Let's try... Uh, where's the one I'm looking for? Holy Details Batman. That's the one. Holy Details Batman. And it just it adds nice contrast, sharpness, and clarity, and it just makes the colors pop a little more. Um, so yeah, that and that was one of those ones that just looks really good with just one click. So before, after, before, after. Uh, there's one here called Do You Believe in Fairies? That's kind of that like fairy tale glowy kind of effect. Uh, let's see what another one maybe looked like. Let's let's try Can't Be Tamed Black and White. You know, that one's a little a little hot for me. That that doesn't work quite as well. Uh, let's try let's try one of the Fuji Color. Fuji Color, Fuji Color Two. It's cold and lonely winter. That one's a real nice cold effect there. So there you go. You can see some some you know sometimes the presets just won't work and you can move on to the next one. Uh, so there's that. But I think the best one for that one is the Holy Details Batman. It just works really nice on photos like that. All right, let's go on to the next one here. Let's do, let's let's see, let's skip that one and go to this one here. So this one, I take a lot of photos like this where it's almost like a, a dark stormy cloud with the sun peeking out. And I really like to make the clouds dramatic for stuff like this. So I created one over here called Dramatic Sky Sunset. So we click on that. Check that out, it just made that sky much more punchy, a uh, lot of contrast, and uh, it, I don't know, I, I really like what it does to the colors. But yet again, if you hop into the adjust, uh, retouch and tone, I have that nice uh, radial filter there waiting for you guys to kind of tweak and move to wherever the sun is in your photo. Obviously I have it here for mine, but if your sun was over here, you could just move it right along and the exposure and everything would follow. So you can see I have some exposure, some contrast, I took the clarity away. Uh, boosted the shadows a little bit and boosted the highlights a good bit and it just it just has a nice effect to the sun So that one is dramatic sky sunsets um, Of course the color gradient sunset that we showed you earlier will probably look nice as well Yep, that looks good as well. I think the sky's a little too blue on that one So obviously you can go in you know remember you can go in and tweak any of this stuff So if we go back into uh, let's see retouch and tone we can grab that radial I mean, I'm sorry, the linear gradient, and we can add some warm tones back in. See, you can just, it's super simple to tweak this stuff. The point of this is 99% of this stuff is already done for you in the preset, and then you can just tweak it little bits to work with your photos. So let's move on to this one here. Now, I don't know about you guys, I do this a lot, especially if I don't want to bracket or if I don't have my filters with me. Uh, I will expose for the highlights, especially if your camera has really good dynamic range. I just expose for the highlights. I'll let everything else kind of fall into some deep shadow, and I'm okay with that because I know I can pull it back in post-processing. So I actually have a specific preset called expose for the highlights. It's right here. So if you click that, boom. It lifts the shadows. Uh, I have a little formula in there uh, that's my favorite way in pictorial to remove noise. So I already have some denoise built in there. Um, and I still keep the detail in the clouds. Also have a nice little uh, lift of shadow in the foreground. I think the, sh I think the colors and the greens are a little too hot in the foreground. So again, I'd probably just go into adjust and color and kind of tone back the vibrance a little bit and the saturation. And there you go, that's looking a little bit more normal. So yet again, 99%, 98% of the stuff was done for me. I'm just gonna you know tweak it a little bit from there. That's a before and after, before and after. All right, uh, and that one again, the preset is called Expose for the Highlights. 
Um, let's go to this one here. So this one uh, is a really good one to use that uh, black and white preset that I told you about earlier, the exposure sandwich black and white. Let's click that, boom. That radial filter runs right through the center of those flowers. And then the uh, gradient filters that I used earlier kind of clamp off that exposure from the corners and it really directs the eye's attention to those little flowers. So that, that preset works really good for a lot of things, especially to direct the eye you know, to the subject. Um, let's go to the next one here. This is a waterfall. This is going to be another one for exposing for the highlights. I was exposing for the water so that the water didn't blow out too hard. So let's click expose for the highlights. Okay, there you go. Lifted everything nicely, added some detail. Yet again, a little too hot on the colors, I think. So let's go into color, take the vibrance down a little bit, and I think it needs some blues so we can go into the white balance take some blues back in there, maybe add some greens to get that water, and there you go. Boom, done again. Before, after, before, after. Uh, these presets I found are great. I use them all the time for myself, if, if, especially if I just wanna quickly get something in, uh, make it look good quickly, shoot it out to Instagram, you know, with a nice little tagline, like, hey, shot the waterfalls today, more photos to come on the blog. You know, it, it gets content out, it makes the photo still look really good. Uh, you know, it, a lot of people will want to view it because it's very vibrant, poppy colors, and it works really good for stuff like that, especially for in kind of social media use. Uh, okay, we'll do one more. So this is another one that's uh, exposed for the highlights. Just click that, and boom. Now that one needs some white balance help going to the warm tones, right? Add some magentas back in there. Raise the exposure a little more, okay? Ease back on the contrast to get the shadow recovery. Now, this isn't a very good photo that I took, but I thought it was a good, a good example of really going dark to expose for those highlights, because this is a very sunny day. So if you go to the before, you can see how dark everything is. Before, after, before, after. So it, uh, this preset tends to do a pretty good job at raising everything without adding too much noise. Obviously that's gonna depend on the ISO you were shooting at and a lot of your camera quality as well, the quality coming off of your sensor. Okay, let's, uh, this one I think was really good with a couple of the black and white presets. So let's do uh, Can't Be Tamed black and white. That's just like your standard nice black and white. This is the Exposure Sandwich black and white yet again. It looks really cool going slant ways, but you can even go back in to retouch and tone, click the radial filter tool and you can move that radial filter wherever you want. You can make it bigger. You can turn it if you want, do whatever you want. You can make it like straight up and down and there you go. So there's that. <clears throat> Let's look at a quick before and after. Before, after, before, after. All right, and now I'm gonna show you a couple of portraits real quick. So this is uh, one of the brides that I shot a couple years ago at a wedding, and this one really looks killer with the, uh, the Fuji Color presets. So I'm gonna click on Fuji Color Fanboy number two, and look at that. I just love what it does to the color. I spent hours trying to perfect these colors with the skin tones and the shadows and the, the, the way it, the hue of the purples and the reds. It's a, it's a hard formula to figure out, but uh, let's do a before and after on that. It's very subtle, but it's got that Fuji look. So before, after, before, after. And then we'll do the Fuji Color Fanboy number one. Uh, see, that's way too orange. So that some of them work, some of them don't, but you can always tweak these. But Fuji Color two, a little more subtle, a little more subtle, excuse me, a little more soft, a little better for portraits. Uh, a lot of these are mostly meant for landscapes, but a few of them you can use really nice on portraits. Uh, look at the exposure sandwich, black and white. That's really nice on this portrait because she has one of her eyes covered with her hair. So that means all your direction is kind of drawn to the other eye. And that other eye has that radial filter of exposure just right over it. So that makes a really nice black and white as well. But I just love the Fuji color one. So I like that. I also kind of like this. I created one called the Wild West. And if you go into adjust and you remove the overlay, that like texture overlay, it's just kind of nice. It's like a nice warm, almost like a sepia tobacco color. I don't know. I really like that too. So that one's called the Wild West. Um, but a lot of those work. So Fuji Color, Fanboy 2, the Wild West. Uh, the black and white uh, exposure sandwich works good. So yeah, those, those you can have a lot of fun with, with portraits. Uh, this is one that uh, one of my buddies took of me uh, at, oh, at the same waterfall, actually. It was this waterfall right here. I was standing in front of it. So he took this of me. I'm gonna do a Fuji Color here on this. Let's do Fuji Color Fanboy. There you go, Fuji Color Fanboy 2. 
Okay, very similar. The Fuji Color Fanboy 2 is just a little more soft, a little subtle, a little more biased towards the blues. Uh, but also on this one, the Wild West works works pretty good. So I like that one too. Like I, I don't know, I kind of kind of grown to like the warmer sepia tone kind of thing lately. So there's that. We'll just do one more real quick to show you. This is another one uh, that we'll use the color gradient sunset on. This is the skyline of Atlanta, Georgia, where I live. And I got up one morning and got the sunrise peeking over the skyline there. So we'll just hit color gradient sunset and boom, you got that beautiful gradation from the blue to the warm tones. Love how it does that. So before, after, before, after. So there's quite a few other ones in here that you guys can uh, you know play around with. There's the uh, hipster party split tone. Let's see, what else did we not use? Uh, the Colorama Glow, if you want to get kind of crazy with the colors, that works on some of them. Autumn Color, we showed you that one. So yeah, there's a few more. You guys can just have fun with these. Um, you know, just get creative. Presets are really fun to just get ideas and kind of generate new creative visions for your photo on how they could look. So uh, yeah, I really appreciate you guys giving me the time today to, uh, to let me go through this and show you how these presets work. Um, I really hope you guys like this. It's the Eric Mark Signature Preset Pack for Pictorial. Uh, it's available now. So I hope you guys love it. Thanks Thanks for watching. If you would like to stay up to date on all of my photography videos and free tutorials, please consider subscribing by clicking on my face. And if you would like to find out more about me and how to improve your photography, visit my website at findingmiddleearth.com.